Hi again. <laughs> Third video today. Um, I had more thoughts. I was finishing watching the um, Esther story, uh, One Night with a King, and then I started having more thoughts. And uh, so I have to put them out there. This, this is probably going to be a very short video, but more things that the Lord was showing me through this story of Esther. It must be, you know, I really, I love the story of Esther. I've actually read Nora Loft's version of it, which was excellent. It was very, very closely based on the uh, uh, book of Esther. Um, but, you know, it was more, you know, uh, like, a st you know, fictional story written more like a story. So it was easier to read than the book of Esther. Nonetheless, um, so I I haven't been able to find it, nor, nor Loft, L-O-F-T, -L Loft. Um, I read it back in the 70s. My sister, it actually was my sister's book, my older sister's book, and I read it. And I was a teenager, and I just loved it. Um, and I read, this, of course, I've read the story of Esther many times. And I've even watched, of course, One Night with the King and the Esther story. And, you know, just, oh, who, who can not resist the story of Esther? It's an amazing book. It has everything in it. Everything you could ever want. <laughs> you know, it's the perfect romance. It's the perfect um, story for guys because it's intrigue and this, you know, bad guys and all kinds of things going on. So, but... Uh, so anyway, I was watching it again, and I saw it backtracked into a couple of scenes that I really like. And I got to the scene where Esther is being presented to the king. First of all, she's 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 in she's in the story on the movie One Night with the King. She is um, a woman of substance. She means not substance. She's a praying woman. She's a woman of faith, but she's also a a knowledgeable woman at least that's the way she's presented in the movies that she has and she has intelligence and she has knowledge and she's improving her mind she's always seeking truth and on um word and wisdom so uh anyway that's how she's presented, presented in, the, in the story and i'm sure she was because she was obviously a woman of wisdom okay and the, the story of esther says so but what treatment what caught my attention was in the story Okay, hold on, I have to catch my thought, because it was just fleeting, now it's gone, hold on, just if I can remember it again, hold on a second. Okay, so in the story, um, we know that she's made ready, because the king was born into his inheritance, he was a natural born king, because he was born into his rule, he was born into his kingdom, where she was chosen, and she had to go through preparation, she had to go through cleansing and rituals and all kinds of things to make her ready to be queen. Although she didn't know she was going to be queen, but she was chosen from among a whole myriad of beautiful women to uh, brought into the harem, if you will, to be chosen. But she didn't know she would be the one, but obviously she was outstanding. Something about her was outstanding to the king. And he recognized in her a woman of quality, a woman with uh, whose worth was above rubies and she turned out to be just that because she saved his kingdom she saved king Xerxes kingdom okay the x-factor so we had this Haman character who represents the accuser of the brethren he, he's the accuser why is he the accuser because he wants to kill the people of God okay he's got a grudge he's holding a vengeance he's got a vengeance he's got an active a vengeance he wants to act out on the people who, uh, who he felt um, was um, he had well he, he wanted to take, take a vendetta vendetta out on the Jewish people so <clears throat> he was raised up for that Pope that moment and he almost did it he almost had to be able to do to to kill the people of God and, and in doing so what a ruined um, ex exerces uh, exerces or King Herceris uh, kingdom and it, he probably would have stolen the kingdom from him, okay? But this woman was raised up to um, to save her people, but also to save the kingdom of her husband, okay? Um, okay, now I had the thought, now it's gone. So we have the accuser of the brethren, who was Haman. Hey, man, let no man steal your crown. Uh, she's, remember, she's, she's, she's given a crown. She presents herself before the king wearing her crown in the, in the, book of revelation the queen is wearing a, a crown of stars and in the movie she's got a little jewel thing a little necklace that she puts in the light and it shines the stars of david and who is the star of david well christ is but also this represents israel israel that star of david is 
Israel, the house of, da of Israel. So she's wearing the government of Israel on her head in, in Revelation chapter 12. And let no man steal your crown. Let no hay man stay, steal your crown. So and then there was another thought that came to me. Hold on just a second. There was something the Lord just showed me in the from the movie. And it's, it's gone on my head again. I must say it uh, as soon as I think of it. Because if I don't, I'll forget it again. Uh, hold on. Let me put you on pause until I, it comes back to me. <laughs> I keep forgetting the real reason I wanted to make this video was I, this is, like I said, when she approached King Esherreras, Exerxes is so much easier to say, the X factor, <laughs> Exerxes, um, she approached him as an equal, not because she was born into the role, but because she, she grew into the role. She went through the rituals of the role. She went through the education of the role. She became a queen. She became a queen in her attitude. She became a queen in her understanding. She became a queen because of her purifications. She became a queen because she changed her identity from being a commoner, a common girl from Susa. What good comes from Susa? You know, there's nothing good like in Nazareth, whatever. She, she knew she was a peasant. She wasn't anything special. She had beauty, but she wasn't anything special. He's, of course, God knew that she was special, but she didn't know she was special. She didn't know her true identity. She had to grow into the role. And as she grew into the role, she gained her confidence. She lost her fear. So even though she was presented with the fact, if you approach the king, you could be going to your death. But she went into the role. She went to the king wearing her crown which was put on her head for a reason, because she was chosen. And when the king saw her, he was pleased. That's what it says. He was pleased when he saw her because she was approaching him with boldness, with equality. Uh, I want you to see this. This is so incredible. I, the Lord was showing me just in a few moments. Um, let's see if I can find it. Um, Esther 7, oh, Esther 6, oh, no, Esther 5. <laughs> okay, so she's just finished praying, and like I said, the queen, the bride of Christ will be, she will, she'll be responsible for prayer, prayer for the people and all the domestic responsibilities of being queen. It'll be placed upon her head. And so she's, she's found out that she is under judgment. Uh, because of this evil Haman. And so she goes into prayer and she tells the people to pray for three three days, fast three days and three nights. So Esther, excuse me, Esther uh, 4.1. <coughs> um, so uh, Mordecai is praying. Oh, hold on. She told everyone else to pray. That's Esther 4. Um, Esther chapter 5, verse 1. Now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel. So like I said, she was dressed like a queen. She was dressed to the nines or to the tens, if you will. <laughs> she was dressed to the tens because she was a perfect ten. And she had the X factor. <laughs> she also had King Xerxes. <laughs> she, she had the X factor, people. She had what it took, and she stood in the inner court of the king's house, over the king's, over against the king's house, and the king sat upon his uh, upon his royal throne in the royal house. He was going to be the domestic, domestic uh, uh, overseer of the king's house. Well, that would be the queen, over against the gate of the house. And so it was when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched, touched the top of the scepter. He was pleased with her apparel. He was pleased with her appearance. She, he was pleased that she felt bold and free to come to him. Isn't that amazing? No, this is the part I want to get to. <laughs> this is what the Lord just spoke to me as I was watching the movie. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther? 
And what is thy request? It shall be given thee to half of the kingdom. What did I just say? What? He said, he's asking, what is it you want? He was so happy with her. He was going to offer her half of his kingdom. Half of his kingdom. What does that mean? Equality. Equality. That's what that means. It means he trusted her that much. He was going to offer. And whether it was just a formality, I don't think so. I don't think so. He might have meant it half-heartedly when he first said it, but he says it three times. He offers her his kingdom three times. And each time more strongly than the last. He says, what is thy request? And it shall be given thee to half the kingdom. Wow, that is trust. And he was actually saying to her, I will trust you with half of my kingdom. I, I, I used to tell my mom this funny thing the Lord said to me one day, and I said a funny thing back to him. And I actually told my mother this, and we got a giggle out of it. And I said, the Lord said to me, I will give you half of my kingdom. And I said, I'll take the half you're in. <laughs> That's what he said to the Lord. And he said to me, and we always used to giggle about it. He, he, this, he knew I was going to what I was going to say. So he, that's why he said it to me. I will offer you half my kingdom. And I said, I said back, well, Lord, I'll take the half you're in. I'll take the half you're in. I don't want half your kingdom. I'm not interested in your kingdom to take it from you in any way, shape or form. I just want where you, I want to be where you are. That's what I want. And so we would get a giggle and he'd ask said actually a couple of times, I'll offer you a half of my kingdom. And I would, I said to him, Lord, I'll take the half you're in. I'll take the half you're in. And this is really amazing. When I when I started thinking about it just a few moments ago, all of a sudden, hold on. He was actually saying to her, you're equal to me. I'm because you're my bride. You're my queen. I am displaying not only are you allowed to approach with boldness and offer, ask your request. I'm so pleased with you. Here's my scepter. I'm holding it out to you. But I'm going to give you up to half my kingdom in the process. That's how happy I'm with you. That is amazing. And what does she do? Does she take it? Oh yeah, okay, I'll take it. I'll take that half and I'll take my people and we'll go live in that half the kingdom and you can do whatever you want with Haman on this side of the, the, the you know, the, of the, your corner of the earth. No, she doesn't do that. She's not interested in his kingdom. She doesn't want his kingdom. She wants to live with him. She wants, she doesn't want the power. She wants his salvation. She wants him to, to, to save her and her people. She's not interested in power. So, so she says to him, what she do? She offers them a banquet for him and Haman. Haman. <laughs> so she makes the, she makes this banquet and guess what happens? Esther 5, 7, they're at the banquet. And the king's really happy. He was even more happy than he was when he first saw her. He says, then answer, um, um, at verse, uh, let me see, let's, let's go back down to verse six. And the king is said unto Esther at the banquet, of the wine, what is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? Even half the kingdom shall be shall be performed. And so then what does Esther say? She doesn't say, okay, I'll take it. She says, okay, here's, here's my request. I wanna have supper with you. I wanna continue this relationship to even a, a deeper uh, place where I can feel that you know I'm, we're more comfortable with each other, but I want you to be really happy. <laughs> before I make my, my request known. He knows that she's asked, wanting something and it's got to be big. Okay. So he, he says, okay, so that's the second time he offers her his kingdom. So then Haman goes and he's really happy with himself. He's Philip puffed up. He thinks this is it. I'm in, I'm in good, I'm in good books now. I'm really on my way to taking, taking over this kingdom. And, uh, he then decides to, uh, build a, um, uh, gallows for Mordecai kill Mordecai, who he really hates. Um, and then he, so that's the end of that chapter. So then the next day, little does he know what's going to happen to him is that the king wakes up after he's had a very bad night and he calls for the Chronicles and the story of Mordecai comes all out and how Mordecai had saved the king's life because of his, um, uh, faithfulness by reporting that these, these, um, um, murderous assassins were in his kingdom or in his court 
And as a result, Mordecai saves the king by giving this report. And the king finds out that he, no reward had been given to Mordecai. So then he gets Haman to take, take a horse and put on the head of Mordecai, his king, after Haman made the suggestion, we all know the story, and he puts on the king's crown on his robe and his, he puts him on the king's saddle uh, and horse and the Haman has to parade him through the, through the street. And Haman's utterly, utterly uh, um, humiliated because of his puffed up vain spirit. He gets caught in this kind of trap. It's kind of funny. It's a very funny story, actually. So this all goes on and now he's going, he, now Haman is really upset and he goes back to his wife and his wife kind of says, I think you're heading for a fall. I think you're heading for a fall. So by this time, I think Haman, fear is in Haman's heart. I think Haman is starting to realize his downfall. He's shaking, I start just shaking his boots, I'm pretty sure, that something's not right. So anyway, um, he gets ready to go to the, the banquet. This is Esther chapter six. And then Esther chapter seven. Um, so the king and Haman come to the banquet uh, with Esther the queen. And the king said unto Esther on the second day of the banquet of wine, which what is thy petition, queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? And it shall be performed even to the half of my kingdom. Now he's really happy. And I'm sure his, his offer is even more sincere than it was the first time. So this is the third time, three times he offers her the kingdom. And queen Esther, and Queen Esther answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given at my petition and my people at my request. For if we had been sold, and I my people to be destroyed, uh, for we are sold, I my people to be destroyed, to be slain, to be and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondsmen and bondsmen and bondswomen, I I had I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. And then King Hasserarus answered and said unto the Queen Esther, Who is he and where is he that durst perform in his heart to do so? And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman, this Haman who, uh, well, then Haman was afraid before the king and Esther. So then this is when King Hasserarus or Xerxes gets up and leaves because he's enraged. He, he can't believe this just happened. And he was caught in a trap that he didn't realize was, really to destroy his kingdom and destroy his household was intended to destroy his household. He had no idea. And so he gets up from the, the bank, the banquet. And he's, he's mad. He's really the wrath. He's in wrath. Where'd we hear that word? Oh yeah. A revelation chapter six, the wrath of the wrath of the King is coming of the, the wrath of the Lord. The day of the judgment is coming on the head of those who wanted to kill God's people. The day of wrath here, the King gets up and he's in wrath. And he went into the palace garden. Haman stood up and to make request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there was an evil determination, uh, that evil was determined against him by the king. Then the king returned um, out of the palace garden into the palace of the banquet of wine, and Haman was fallen upon the bed where an Esther was. So now there was an appearance that Haman has, was just attacking the queen, which was not really the case. He wasn't attacking the queen. What he was doing was falling at her feet. He was worshiping at her feet. Where have we heard this before, people? He was worshiping at her feet because he's in terror. He's in terror. He's of the synagogue of Satan, and he's in terror. He meant to harm her. He meant to hurt her. He meant to kill her and her people. That was his intention. That's the intention of the synagogue of Satan. And now he's at her feet, worshiping at her feet in terror. And when the king comes in, his wrath is even more wrathful, because now he's at the he it has the appearance that he's be, that his queen is being attacked in his own house, and this is what he says. Then the um, Haman had fallen upon the bed where Esther was. Then said the king, "Will the, he force the queen also before me, in the house?" As as the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face, um, and so they dragged him away and they hanged him that day. That, that, that very day, that very, that very hour, he went out and they hanged him. The very gallows in which they prepared for Mordecai and, 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 and Haman and his evil, but it wasn't over then. 
because after this, then after Queen Esther had made the petition for her life and her people's life, now the king had a problem because there is still this, this uh, decree that had gone out that can't be revoked. So what's going to happen now? He, that's when Mordecai comes into the picture and he starts to say, okay, well, this is what we can do. We can save the people by doing this. They can give them arms. They can, they can take care, take up arms. Um, and, and they're going to be in a battle, but they'll be saved. Most of them will save. In fact, a great majority of them will be saved and very few will die. And it turned out is not as many died that day. And the enemies of, of the Jewish people, the enemies of the people, were exposed because they went on the attack. So everybody was exposed who wanted to destroy God's people. There was the, the plots were all exposed. All the people who had this enmity for the words, the, the Jewish people, they they did their best to to take up arms and kill the people, but they were the ones who end up being killed and having their property stolen. Or not stolen, but taken from them. Because that was the right, that was decreed, that would came up. From, came from Mordecai. Anybody who would attack, they got their property stole, st taken from them. And that property went to the Jewish people. Does it sound familiar to you? Yeah, it should. Because it's a playing out of what's going on right now. So um, all that, all that, uh, uh, the plots of the enemy are going to fall on their own head and that the, all the things that they had stolen from us will be taken from them and given back to the people. So, um, and let's go to go to the book of Revelation just one little bit here and just read about that just in case, you, again, I've read it so many times, but just in case you hadn't heard it, let's just go there. <clears throat> Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before their feet and to know that I have loved thee. You know why, why they're doing that? Because they're, they're fright, freaked out of their minds. They're frightened out of their minds because they know the wrath of God is going to come on, come on their heads, fall on their heads. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them, which will dwell upon the earth. Remember now, Esther was safe and sound in her, her castle. She was safe and sound in the household of God. She wasn't, even though she had orchestrated the, the redemption of her people, she wasn't involved in the fighting. She was taken out. She was in the king's household. She was safe. She was in a safe place. Because she had done her job, which was to petition the king. She was put in a position to be close to the king so that she could make a petition for that time that was going to come that could, brought to, could have brought utter destruction to the people of Israel. She was in a safe place, but the people of Israel still had to do some fighting. There was a fight still, and many people died that day uh, and during that time of, of, of the time of Esther and Haman and Mordecai and all those people. There was a lot of people who died. <clears throat> but God overcame them. Um, and so it also says here, um, hold fast. Behold, I come quickly. He tells the church of Philadelphia, I come quickly. Hold fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. No, hey man, take your crown. And he will make you a pillar in the temple of his God. And then also in Revelation chapter 6, where we see the wrath of God fall. And I told you it's Revelation chapter 6. You see, <clears throat> um, Revelation chapter 6, <clears throat> and when he, and I beheld, and when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast her on timely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And, oh, which, by the way, yesterday on Purim, I took the dog to the park. I took my dog to the park on Purim. Um, after I had made my videos and it was in the afternoon and <clears throat> and actually it wasn't my day to take the dog to, for the to the park but my sister asked me to so I took her to the park and oh my gosh the wind was going crazy it, when this when it wasn't blowing windy the sun was nice and warm I mean in late February you wouldn't think it'd be warm actually when it wasn't windy it was it was spring like it was really lovely but anyway when it all of a sudden this huge wind <sighs> It was windy like crazy, and the wind seemed to be coming from two different directions, you know, from the, the from the, the east and then from the west and from the north and from this. It was just blowing from whew, these gusts of winds. That was what was happening yesterday. It was really interesting. So anyway, that's what happened yesterday um, on Purim here in Vancouver. 
and she has shaken up a mighty wind, and the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and idol were moved out of its place, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondsman, and every free man, and hid themselves in the den, and the rocks, and the mountains, and said unto the rocks and mountains, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, the king on the throne, king Xerxes, king Jesus, and from the wrath, the wrath of the king, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Why is he in wrath? Because the enemies of his people, the enemies of his bride, the enemy of his queen are, are threatening our life and try to take it. But we will approach the king with boldness because we've become equal with him, because not because we were born into the role, but because we've been purified and cleansed and gone through the rituals, and because we've got knowledge and understanding, we have grown into our identity. Christ will not be unequally yoked. He will not, because he is a king, he must have a queen. And he we will he will not be ashamed of us. He will he will we will be presented him without shame. There will be nothing, there will be no accusation from the enemy. What a time we're living in. What a word. I am so excited. I hope you're excited too. What a word we're getting from the Lord. This is amazing. On Purim, I wasn't expecting a word on Purim. Well, I wasn't expecting. I'm, every morning I wake up with something, but <laughs> this was unexpected. I was, I was, I'm blown away. Anyway, I think this is all I'm going to say on this. I have no idea what I'm going to call this video, but I'll, I'll come up with something. You know, I always do. Anyway, God bless. And I hope you have a great, great day.